All right. Hello, Joy Seekers. Stephanie here. Thanks for tuning in to my latest Spotlight on Joy podcast. My guest today is Kristen, Kristen Hutchinson. She is a mom and a wife and the host of her own podcast, Chicken in a Bag. She's also done local stand-up comedy in the Boston area, and she's a bartender. Kristen considers herself a helper, connector, and communicator, and shares her amazing inspirations and insights on her Instagram, Kristen Being Kristen. She's all about being herself and wants to help others do the same. And in one of her recent posts, she describes herself in this way. You'll find me somewhere between inspiring others, dodging negativity, and making things happen. We both connected on Instagram last fall, soon after my sister shared one of her inspiring posts with me. So welcome, Kristen. Thanks for having me, Stephanie. I'm so glad to be here. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so grateful to connect with you last year. And so my podcast is all about talking about life and joy and the things that matter and really wanting to inspire people at this time. And so I always, you know, want to choose guests that um, have kind of gone on their own journey, found, found inspiration and have something, we all have something to share. And so uh, I really found um, what you had been sharing to be really inspirational to me. And I figured, hey, let's, let's share it with the world. <laughs> so. Well, I love that. I think it's so important because I think, I think especially these days, it's so easy to get caught up in fear, doom, gloom, and depression. And uh, so to pe the people that wanna bring the light and shine some happiness, I, I say the more voices, the better, because that's what you need. I think they say, drown out negativity. Yeah. But like, it's so hard to do because negativity is so much more popular and so much easier to feed into. So, so I commend you on trying to bring joy to more people because we need more of it, so. Yeah, I and I think that. we still try to bring in the reality of things too, because with the suffering that we do, we do find more joy. If we didn't have those, those moments, we wouldn't find as much joy as we have now. So we still need those moments as much as they are you know awful and we wish we didn't have to go through those times like those are what help fuel our joy and inspire us the most too so um, I, I think that also makes us grow you know yeah, what I mean like absolutely. that's what I try to say like I always realize when I'm in the thick of something and I'm like oh my god what this is so awful and like you say why is this happening I always have to try to change my inner dialogue and be like okay what am I supposed to be learning right and I know it sounds hard to do in the in the thick of it but really sometimes I think things do come before you and that's your time that you're getting a sign from the universe that it's time like you know you have to, to try to look around and see what's going on and you'll sometimes find either your gift or or a lesson or something that actually helped you grow in those tough times so try to think of it that way absolutely absolutely yeah. and I know you've been through a lot in the past year um your husband's health and all and so with that in mind and what you've experienced what does joy mean to you god joy to me is just like um it's like a, a feeling of happiness, right? Like joy is just kind of like, I don't know, just seems like when I think of the word joy, I think of like bright and, and light and celebration. And, and it's kind of funny. My mom's name is Joyce and she's probably like my biggest light and my biggest inspiration. So I have a, a, a so for me, when I heard that question, I was like, oh God, my mom, that's all I can say, my way of joy, because that's part of her name. And um, I just, I think joy is something that some people have an easier time embracing it some people have a harder time finding it but I think that it's infectious so the more joy that you can find in your life and try to bring to others uh people want to feel it I just don't think a lot of people have the opportunity to feel joy you know yeah. happiness and joy is a weird thing for some people yeah it takes it sometimes it takes some of us a, a lifetime and you know for myself joy is my middle name so I, I kind of have I kinda, I'll have to live up to <laughs> So, oh, that's so cool. But I, I struggle, wish... but, but I struggle with it too. That's the thing is yeah. the things that you have, like literally as part of your name is something that you can still struggle with. And so that's what my blog is all about and shining your joy, because I've recognized, just like you said, the more we feel it for ourselves, the more we can share it with the world. So yeah, it can amazing. ripple it out. Ripple it out. Yeah, ripple exactly. effect. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing to, to spread. It's a good thing that's <laughs> contagious in a good way. So <laughs> Um, that's amazing. And I, um, is there anything else um, that you kind of learned a little bit more, like kind of based on what you went through with your husband? Did joy mean anything different? Oh, you, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny because, you know, one of the things I learned over the, you know, 2021 was going pretty good. I was got my podcast going. I was really on this mission. I was really just trying to bring light and love to people because the past two years, well, going to go on three now, has really challenged people. And, and I, talk to people as a bartender and I see people and people have a lot of strong opinions about 
you know, COVID and, and the past couple of years, and it's really divided a lot of people. And it's a really hard topic to discuss. Mm -hmm. And I see effects of it, the emotional and the, the, I really worry a lot about the mental and emotional effects it's had on a lot of people yeah. um, because I see the variety of people when I talk to them. And um, towards the end of 2021, my husband did get sick and he did wind up in the hospital. And it was really, um, God, I had to really tap into joy. I had to tap into like, I had to like shut down fear and everybody is just breathing into fear so easily. Like yeah. fear is so easy. And what fear creates in people is almost like um, fear doesn't bring up the best side of you. No, it, it makes you, it makes you more reactive. Um, and, and, you know, you go into like fight or flight. So then, you know, if you're fearful, then you're, you want to fight because you're just like, you're like, I don't understand this. I'm scared. Right. Yeah. And for me, when he, when he was sick, I was like, I can't tap into fear. I have to go into faith. Like I have to go into like this joy, mind, light, like bright, like set the intention of what I'm going to accomplish. Right. And I really had to tap into all that. But what was really awful about it was that I'm a very open person and I like to share my journey and I like to talk to people because I really think that's what helps other people yeah, find absolutely. their way to the light. And because of such of the divisiveness of the topic, I kind of had to keep it to my chest and I kind of had to just shut down all my social media because a lot of times when people are just typing on a, on, a, on a keyboard, they're not thinking that there's another person on the other side. They're not, they're just thinking of their feeling on a topic. So I didn't want to open my, my world, my life, my mindset to anything negativity because I had to tap into every ounce of that fight and like mindset that I had. Wow. So that's the only thing I hate. I wish, you know, God forbid if it was something other sickness, I could have been on there every day and I could have been journaling daily and, and doing video blogs and helping other people because I learned so much in a hospital environment, like how lonely it is for yeah. the family members, how scary it is, how some people don't know how to even, um, Re, you have to research and fight for your part, your, your, your loved one sometimes, because sometimes you might not be agreeing with certain medical treatment that's being given. And, and it's, a, it's scary to go up against people that have 15 years of schooling and, and you're just a little bartender or a wife thinking something. Yeah. And so that's a lot of the stuff that I learned. And, you know, I plan to share more of the journey with people because I really feel like there's one of the things that I did learn in that journey is that people need help. And, yeah. and people, people don't know how to kind of some, I have like this weird mindset. I think it comes from being a bartender. When something hard happens to me, I know how to just kind of get in the zone and just yeah. attack it. And other people, you know, they might get overwhelmed by the emotions. And I learned how to, I learned how to take those emotions and really tap them into like a, almost like a fierce, like fighter with like a dog with a bone. And, <laughs> and so I'm lucky that I have that. So I really, it was a really scary, hard journey. And, but I learned a ton of stuff yeah. and then I also felt like it kind of awoken more of like another, um, visualization of what I think I'm trying to do for people. Like, I always know that I like to help people. I yeah. was really like, hey, feel happy, but I really think what I'm trying to also bring this year is like a little bit more of like, you know, healing and happiness and helping people. So that's, that's what I got from it. That's amazing. And Thank you. You mentioned too that um, there was a lot of like energy healing and music therapy that you were playing music constantly um, yes. for your husband while he was in there. And so let's talk about music as a, a, a as a healer and tell mm -hmm. me more about kind of what what tools you used for your husband okay. specifically. Well, I know you're a musician, so I think just music in general. I mean, let's be honest. It's it is a it's a therapy. I mean, we use it as music therapy for for people. We use it for children. Um, you know, a lot of kids with autism, they really do. They do music therapy for them. Um, and I just think, come on, think about it. When you're having a bad day, what do you do? You put your favorite song on in the car or the house and you, and you like get your emotions going. Or if yeah. you're sad, you broke up with somebody you want to put on like, oh my God, I, I just need to cry my eyes out, you know? So um, music's always, right? Is that right, Steph? Yeah. But um, music's always been something I've loved. You know, um, my mom always had Stevie Wonder and all this earth wind and fire and all this great music playing yeah, in my house she just she just loves to put her music on and clean the house you know she was a single mother and we always just have dance parties in the living room and um <laughs> you know music's just always been something I've been very inspired by like I've always gone through all different varieties of musical um stylings that I like and um I just think that there's a lot of power in it and I think a lot of people probably are, feel the same way when my husband was in the hospital um I was really trying to, you can't be there all the time. 
So when I couldn't be there, I would I would put one specific station on that he he likes that type of music. But I also thought that it was a positive music to have on in the background when he was in a coma. Right. And then when I would get there, I started using binaural beats. And um, I don't know how I found them. I, I, I'm one of those people that picks up information, just all these weird places. And then like something will happen in my life. And I'm like, ooh, I, I have to do. It. <laughs> I don't know what to do. And so um, I decided to start using binaural beats. So when I would get there, I would just set up my iPad on a table and I would just put on as loud as I could. You're supposed to have it on headphones to really have it do the healing thing that's supposed to do. But I would just put on different ones for different areas of the body. You know, it would depend on what we're trying to focus on. And I would just put that on. And and then I would put on, I really like, because I was really tapping into faith, I was really like, I'm kind of like, I'm not a religious person. I'm more of a spiritual person. So, but I was putting on a lot of like um, spiritual music because yeah. it's so moving and emotional. And I would literally just hold his hand and just scream the words to these songs. And I was just like, I don't know like if he ever heard me. I was like, people <laughs> must have been looking at me in the room like, what is this crazy woman doing? But um, I do believe that it really was helpful because, you know, um, when he did come out of the coma and he did go to rehab, like his lungs were 20 times, like his lungs were 100 percent fine. And wow, I just I amazing. do believe mindset and you, I just I believe our mind is so powerful. And I think a lot of people aren't taught that. Yeah, you know, we're taught that's crazy, that's stupid, and so a lot of people are afraid to really let go and tap into that. And I was just like, I'm opening up to anything and everything that I think of, and I'm gonna just do it all. And so I think music was very, it was a huge part of how I, actually healing me. It yeah. was a huge part of how I got through those couple of months when he was in the hospital and being exhausted. And I used um, <clears throat> meditation for my, myself to go to sleep at night because yeah. I was so, so emotional. worried and everything. Right. right. And I, so I needed something. So I would do like a five minute meditation on YouTube. And then I would put on that type of music just to, for myself to heal. I would put on like the binaural beats or the sleep one for me to kind of heal my myself mentally while I would sleep at night. That's amazing. So, yeah. I mean, you were, I mean, like the, I know you were thinking that you're so crazy being there, like singing along, but you know, you were activating your faith. You were making, making faith happen. You were tapping right into it. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's where the miracle came from. So that's unbelievable. So. <laughs> That's what I think, Steph. Yeah. I mean, just but, he hearing about hearing about his how fast his healing was was just incredible. Because yeah. not everybody's that lucky, and so that's you know it, it's it speaks to something about like that that faith, you know. Faith yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I know it's kind of it is kind of crazy because sometimes he doesn't feel like he's doing as great, and then I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you know, it's a miracle that you're here. First of all, and second of all, that you're even back to work already is mind blowing to people. Like people cannot even, like people can't believe it. Yeah. What kind so, of work does he do? He's a construction worker. So, wow, I mean, he, so he's out yeah, there. Yeah, he's out there. Like, I mean, he's out, out there, there today. The boss, like, it's freezing today. It's like, I don't know, like five degrees or something like that. <laughs> so cold. And he's just out there and I'm just like, I'm blown away. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. I'm his biggest cheerleader. Yeah, for sure. That's so a, that's amazing. Yeah, for me too, I find music to be very calming. Um, singing, singing too is even better when you're singing or dancing along even better than when you're just listening to it because you're really kind of owning it and it helps you really it helps me digest the emotions I'm feeling because a lot of the times I'm just like I don't know what I'm feeling I don't really know what I think about this but music kind of helps me get there and it helps me tap into that healing even even quicker so oh 100 totally agree with you on that yes. and it doesn't really matter like what i i mean i listen to i have a variety of genres i listen to a lot more old school stuff than recent things but i can find i feel like i can find inspiration anywhere and um you probably know as you follow me that i love the carpenters so that's usually yes. my go that's my go-to um <laughs> so <laughs> I love that. I, love every, the carpenters. I know everybody. I think it's hysterical because I, this year is going on 19 years. So I've been a fan for half my life it's this crazy. year. It's unbelievable. And what, I, what, what, brought, what, what, how did you find them? And like, what brought them free? Like what, what, what did they speak to you? Cause I remember them from when I was a, a kid. You know yeah, I mean? it was, it was fate because I was working in a library. Um, but it was a volunteering, like summer reading program. I was kind of help signing kids up. And I was just looking for something to check out. I was in the CD section and it just pops up. I'm like, oh, the Carpenters, who are they? Because my parents didn't really, uh, they were as much of a music enthusiast as I was and it never came yeah. up. And I took it home and I burned a copy of it, made it into a tape in my car and the, the rest is history and just started, I think I bought a couple documentaries and everything, but like that's, that's the, they're my people, I guess. Those are, that's my band. And um, I've always felt like kind of almost a spiritual connection with it. Gotcha. You know what I mean? And like, it, like it was meant to be and it's helped me and, and 
just to deal, I feel like, I don't know, I feel connected to, to who Karen was too. I feel like there were some similarities. And so you just, you find your music and you tap into it and it, and it, it just, it's incredible. <laughs> you know, it's true, it's different for everybody. Like my son doesn't listen to anything contemporary. I mean, he is old school. I mean, That's old, amazing. old. He's into like jazz and like, wow. like music from like the thirties and forties. Like that's his era. And it's so funny. I love and that. Aura. And I love it too, because it's like, it, it, it's it's kind of cool. He's his own person and I he's such a, and I, I just love like, like he'll just be working and he'll just have this music playing in the background. If, this, if he does a TikTok live, he'll have like this old school music playing. He's like, and this is the music I like, so deal with it. And, and I just love it because it's just like, I don't know where it came from, but that really speaks to the fact that that's his. And I feel like sometimes maybe people lived in different eras, like you maybe had different lives at some yeah. point. And maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's being homish to that that other portion of yourself from that time. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's, really I think it connected. represents an old soul for sure. When yes. you like the yeah. older stuff, like it represents, like, I feel like I could have been, you know, born in the forties or something just based yeah. on my taste. And ironically, when I found the Carpenters, I was 19, which is the same age as when she was when they started. And also I was born a year after she died. So I find no coincidence that I've stumbled upon the music. And so yeah. just like with your son and that just fits. And he's like, you know what, deal with it. And the same, right. with, same with me last year, I decided I was like, I'm just sharing this stuff. And I know it's like repetitious and I keep coming with it, but it really is, this is me. And like, you know, take yeah. it, leave it, you know? And so that's, that's awesome. And that's kind of what you represent. That's really the, the, the epitome of what you represent and what you do is like, be yourself, you know, it, like your name, Kristen being Kristen, you're just being yourself, take it or leave it. You know, if you don't like it, you don't have to sit here and listen to me. If you like it, join, join me. So <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I think it's always been because I've always just been very strong willed. My mother just kind of was like, okay, Kristen's is going to do Kristen. So, and she never really tried to curb it. And um, I think that I just kind of learned my, who I was at a young age. And I really did a lot of self-work young. Um, I was very lucky to kind of like be introspective and, and understand what I like and what I don't like. And I just it wasn't interested in doing what I don't like. Um, it's not always easy to live that way. I mean, I think that's probably why I've been a bartender for over 20 years because uh, there's a lot more flexibility in that world. Yeah, um, and there's a lot more creative people in, in bartending, which is kind of nice because, it, you know, you meet people that are musicians or artists or people that have another side hustle because, you know, you bartend a couple of nights and then you have all that other time free during the day to pursue your passions. Right. And the name, the name Kristen being Kristen actually came from co when I started doing comedy. I, um, I always just go through these things that I want to try. And I, I made like a one woman show. And then when I was trying to name it to put it on YouTube, I was like, what should I call it? And I kept calling, I was like calling everybody in my family, like, what should I call it? You know, should I call it like meet me in the middle or uh, <laughs> this? Because I was like, because the reason I got into comedy was to try to help people heal, like to yeah, try right, to bring people right. back together because I don't like division and I don't like anger because I don't think it really serves anything. I think we just circle. And then I couldn't really think of it. I go, well, it's just me on stage for 20 minutes, just off the, t off the top of my dome. Like I was called Kristen being Kristen. And then I just kind of stuck with it. Oh, that's, that's awesome. It makes you, you, that's, it's like, it's, it's amazing. I mean, just seeing that branding on um, your podcast as well is really cool. It's like, that's you hundred percent. And that's the way it should be always the way it should be. Um, I will, I'll ask you about chicken in a bag first, but I'll, the question after will fit really well with what you were talking about with being a bartender. Um, but okay. let's get right into chicken in a bag. First of all, where did the name come from? Because it's like really, really, really unique. And <laughs> And tell me more about kind of what, like how it all came together and what you really hope to bring to it um, in the coming year. Okay. So um, when I was on COVID break, I started with the IG live. Um, when I was doing the IG live, a lot of people kept saying, oh, you need to be in more on more um, p places than just uh, Instagram. You need to have your stuff everywhere. So then one of my friends was like, you got to start a podcast and I'm going to help you. So <laughs> he was the one that was kind of helping me with the branding and everything like that. And so I said, well, it's going to be called chicken in a bag. And they were like, chicken in a bag, tell me why. Because <laughs> they were trying to understand. And so um, I used to watch my sister's kids when they were younger. And a lot of times I would make dinner and then go home from there. My son and I would go home after. And I used to make this dish called chicken in a bag. <laughs> and you would take the chicken and the, and the vegetables and you put some seasoning and, and you cook it in the oven. And then when you would open it, there'd be all these different flavors mixed together. It was delicious. Wow. So when I was naming the podcast, my brother-in-law, Darren, was like, you got to call a chicken in a bag. And I'm like, you think so? And he goes, yes. He goes, people are going to be like, what is that? First of all, yeah. so they're going to click on it. 
And second of all, it's really kind of a metaphor for life of what I was trying to do with the podcast. I was trying to just have a show that I could have people on from all walks of life, that we could have interesting conversations, kind of like I do at the bar, Yeah. Um, meet people and just kind of stir it up and see what comes up. And because I think a lot of times in society now with social media, we have become a very categorized life, like people, right? Yep. We'd be like, well, look at someone's social media page before we even get to know who they are. And then we didn't already make a decision if we like or don't like them. And yeah. when you have an organic conversation, you're getting to know the person through their life experiences. And you're like, oh, wow, I didn't think I would like that person. But after hearing their story, I connect to them or I connect to them on this aspect. So that's where the name came from. And it was really just um, an, an additional way to kind of have a, a weekly show that could go everywhere where maybe people could kind of hear different people's um, point of views from different walks of life, from different experiences, whether it's a business owner, whether it's somebody who recovered from alcohol or drug addiction, maybe might be a political analyst another week. And, and just showing the fact that we can have difference of opinions and still get along. Absolutely. We don't all have to be the same person Absolutely. because that really makes your world very small when you only talk to the people that you think just like. It doesn't help you grow or expand your thoughts. And a lot of times, through conversations with different people, I sometimes push myself to grow or think differently on a topic than I did originally. Yeah. So I think that's what we're missing in society. You know, um, we're missing we used to have connection. a lot of shows. Yeah, we're we used to have connection. shows that would do that. Yeah. We could watch it on TV. We could watch like, you know, Phil Donahue or, or Oprah or, you know, all these different shows that would have people on and they would tell their story and then audience members could get up and ask questions. You know what I yeah. mean? It was a way for them to, you know, because, the world is very big and, and every state is so different and it's so easy to look at social media and be like, this is how the world is. And it's like, well, this is how the world is in this small area, but a lot of other people have had different experiences or yeah. it's very different in different areas of the country or the, or the world. So if you only want to hear one person or you only, or you're going to, or you're going to think that's how the world is because one person's making shiny videos and think, oh, that's how it is. <laughs> You know, that that's that's all you're going to know. So uh, it's really just trying to help people listen to different points of view and, and, and try to expand themselves to maybe learn something new or m push their buttons a little bit to maybe make them think a little bit differently or challenge themselves. Yeah, it's good. We all need it. And, and everyone else does, too. And it's so true that we have such a narrow frame of the way the world is. And, you know, we're all human, first and foremost. That's we can connect because we're human and we're always going to find something that is relatable, even if we have varying political beliefs, varying religious beliefs or, or, or whatnot, like we can always connect and being human and there's always gonna be something. I, that's kind of the way I've always lived is I've always tried to find a way to connect with everybody. Even if I'm not best friends with everyone at the end of the day, I've always tried my best to find that common ground to connect with people. And I think it makes a difference because a lot of people, you know, like me, sometimes you get you give up when you don't get the response you expect from people or people aren't as mm -hmm. welcoming. You give up a little bit in your mind. You're like, well, geez, you know, like I'm yeah, open. What else wrong with me? I, I'm, I'm open. Why why are you not open to have this conversation and to and yeah. to embrace each other for who we are? And so it's, right. there's a lot of things that are very confusing, but you know, all we can do is be a light and be who we are and and welcome people in with open arms. And so it's great to see that you're doing that with the podcast and um definitely looking forward. Yeah, it's been on break for a couple of months because of everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be relaunching season two soon. So that's um, okay. and that's yeah, okay. so it's going to be coming back, but there's tons of episodes already out. So yeah, I've, I've, I've watched several of them, including an interview with your, your own mom, which is just amazing. Like how often do we all in, really sit down and interview our mom, um, of the mom, yeah. the mom that, br that brought us life, you know? <laughs> I had to talk her into it too because she's so funny. She goes, well, who's going to want to listen to me? But, you know, you know, going back to Joy or Trailblazer, I mean, like, you know, I really feel like my mom really made me who I am, you know? And it's so funny because she had three daughters, but we're all so different. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know how I got all these lessons because sometimes my little sister's like, when did she say that? And I'm like, you know, but um, <laughs> <You remembered. laughs> yeah. And it's like, because I took all, everything, I was eating up everything she was saying, you know, like her and her and Mr. Rogers had very similar like styles like of communication you know what I mean it was very like okay yeah. that's your feelings and that's okay and good days and bad days like she was very like let your feelings out it's okay like haven't haven't you angry be angry you know write it down you know she she just had like a lot of skill sets and you know she was a single mother in the 70s and she never was angry and never flipped out she always had her shit together she always looked good she never wow. complained so I was like wow. you know what 
I feel like having a conversation with her was really helpful because I feel like a lot of people say like, oh God, I got to do everything. This is so hard. Everything's so hard. And like, <laughs> she never, and that's why maybe I don't think life is hard because I would look at her and she's like, okay, it'll be better tomorrow. I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? She just <laughs> had a way of just like yeah. helping you just kind of work through some tough stuff, you know, like she just handled herself with like this grace. And I was like, so I think I got a lot of skill sets from her. And that's why I was trying to have the conversation because maybe it might help a new mom or maybe it will help somebody who's a single mom or somebody yeah. who is trying to learn how to juggle all these different uh, roles, you know? So it was really fun chatting with her. Yeah. It was incredible, incredibly inspiring just to see, you know, two generations speaking to each other, a mom and a daughter, and just, you know, telling all about life and just all the things that you both still remember and mm-hmm. then still have importance today. You know, like you, you maybe, and maybe you didn't even see the full importance of it then, but then you realize, wow, that really did get us through this time or, or whatnot. And, and so, and she remarried, which was wonderful. You yeah. Know, that's a, that's a in great, her, like in her sixties, like they're adorable. Yeah. What a, awesome. what a great happy ending to it all. I know. But, even, but she would still be cool. Even if she didn't, like, I feel like <laughs> she, she had such a presence about her that she was like, I'm me, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like if I don't, if I yeah. get married, I don't get married. I'm still who I am. I'm still awesome. So I just yeah. think that's, that's really inspiring to hear. Thank you. Yeah. She's <laughs> great. I love her. And so as a bartender by night, you've joked yeah. on Instagram that bartenders are like therapists. Would you mind without getting too, oh, obviously you don't want to get too personal. Would you mind sharing an example of something like that, that you've experienced like with a patron? As a There's bartender? so many, it's so many. First of all, like you really do make a good connection with people. Like I literally just had coffee yesterday with one of my regulars from like a bar that I worked at back in 2003. Wow. Like we just always had a really good friendship. Um, we've always kept in touch off and on, like through social media. And like, when I did my one woman show, like three years ago, she showed up for it. She wow. was one of the people in the audience. And then, great. um, we reconnected when my husband was sick and like, we went and met for coffee and, you know, she's just one of those people, like no judgment, you know, it doesn't matter if we think the same on things. She just like, she's just a good person to listen to you. And we, we met for coffee yesterday and, um, you know, you meet people and the thing about being a bartender is people are coming in either because they're looking to get away, they're looking to celebrate, or they're looking to drown their sorrows. So yeah. you, become, as a bartender, and I said a bartender in the 90s when it was a little bit different, it was, it was up to you to make your clientele. You know, it's almost like, so, it's like, almost like building a social media following. Wow. Bartending was like that in the 90s. Like they would give you the worst shifts and it was up to you to show that you could build up a, 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 a customer base. You know, like you had to kind of earn, earn your shifts. And, um, you know, you had to be a little bit uh, thick skinned because you would never know what someone would say to you. You don't know who's on a, having a good day or a bad day. Alcohol right. will take a filter away from people. So sometimes people might be a little bit aggressive and you have to learn how to kind of um, deflect and like, de- you know, take people down a little bit if they're up, you know, so you really learn a lot of like those psychological skills, you know, it's a, it's a lot of mind stuff. And, right. um, God, I've met so many people of the year, so many things. Like I have a really good memory. I can remember so much about you. Like I can wait on you and then you can come in a year later. I'm like, oh, how's the house? And they'll be like, how the hell do you remember when we bought a house? Do you know what I mean? And I blow people away. Like, it's just weird. But if, if I have an intense conversation with somebody, it goes on like this Rolodex and I just have like a facial recognition. Like people are like, Kristen, what's that person's name? What's that person's name? Because I can remember like everybody's name or what they drink or, or what their kids' names are. Wow. And, um, I don't know. I, I've had people that have like opened up and told me some of their darkest secrets. Um, I, I had one guy that was going through a really um, bad divorce and I became so invested in, in this custody battle that I was like, oh my God, if he does not get custody, I'm going to be crushed. You know oh what I mean? Gosh. And he would just come in and talk to me when he was going through it. I'm, you know, wound up working out well for him. And, and you know, he, he and because, uh, you know, you sometimes don't hear about the good, the, the good dads and the bad moms. Like you don't hear that side sometimes. Yeah. And, um, you know, he was one. Um, I, I've been there to see people's relationships start. I've, see, I've gone there through people's like first date engagement and, and buy a house and have a baby. Like I've been through so much with people because wow. the bar I'm at right now, I've been there for 10 years. So like, I've really been part of these people's lives. Like, you know, your people's confidence sometimes. Um, sometimes you're there to kind of, someone's having like one of their worst days or people will tell me like their deepest traumas. And, you know, and that's one of the things that's hard about being a bartender sometimes because you'll have a person that just dumped something like, oh my God, I just lost my brother. And then the next minute someone will be like, oh my God, I just got a job. And you're like, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. How and you're can still I holding you know? on to that moment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're constantly like on this like roller coaster sometimes of emotions. But I'll tell you, one of my favorite things is my bar is open for the holidays and people always go, oh my God, that's awful. You have to work on Thanksgiving and Christmas. But we all like working them because we don't make everybody work all of them, right? Yeah. And so I think at Thanksgiving, I opened up two years ago. Uh, people are like, oh, I can't believe it to go. I'm like, oh, I don't mind. I walk, walked in. I wasn't open yet. And there was a guy at the door. I was like, you know what? Let me open a couple minutes early for him. I opened the door and, you know, people tell you everything. His brother had just passed a couple uh, months prior. Um, it was his first holidays without him. Um, it was just him and I, and it was the greatest experience because he and I just sat there and he uh, told me all about his brother. And I got to, as a stranger, listen to him and, and, and send him love and and you know give him the energy he needed to go to the next family function he was just stopping in between one house to the next wow. house and you know and sometimes you can't really say because everyone else in the room is mourning you know everyone yeah. in that everyone you like if you lose somebody i feel like the first holidays um after a passing of a loved yeah. one is the hardest so i was i was yeah right so i was really happy that i could be there for him we had i don't know his name i never saw him again but for that moment um we just had such an organic, amazing conversation. And we left a shot at Jameson on the bar for him and we cheers to him. And, and then he went on his way. And, and to me, that's the stuff that fills me. And then that's what makes me want to be on my mission to help other people. Yeah. Because I, I know that a lot of people don't know how to process it or, or that I, I want to be there for people because sometimes people can't say it to their family or they can't say it to their, you know, um, you know what I mean? So that, that's why sometimes I'm happy that I am a bartender. And even if I, probably get a great job someday or, I, or my business takes off, I will probably keep one shift a week because I just love that connection to the everyday person because it keeps your ear to the street of what's really yeah. going on. And just the, just being someone else's cheerleader, like, and not even expecting what's going to happen and like it filling you up, but then also they're going out, like out the door with like a, just a level of joy and confidence that they didn't even expect. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's what we're, that's what we're here for. You know, it's like, that's our, that's our mission. To, to, right. to make someone's life a little bit lighter just by our right. presence and just by listening, just by saying, like, you probably didn't even have to say that much. You were just sitting there listening to him. You just need mm -hmm. someone to talk to. So um, listening is a big thing and we don't do enough of it. You know what I mean? Sometimes people just need to be heard, you know, and yeah. I think, and that's what we forget. And I think sometimes society now we just kind of say things. Sometimes we just like, don't say things in like the easiest way. Sometimes it's like, well, then now you're not going to, people aren't going to listen. So like, once you go combative, <laughs> you shut down the listening. I just I yeah. think there's so much better just listen to each other, you know, or just stop worrying about what you're feeling and just listen to another person's experience. Yeah. You know, like that's yeah. their experience. They're not saying that's yours, that's theirs. Yeah. You know, and if you can listen, maybe you would learn something. And you never, yeah, you never know what you can learn just by listening and being kind of still and not being so quick to try to react to it or like have an opinion. Just just listen. And that's one of the things I talk about with like. I made a little uh, infographic with uh, a good friend who's a graphic designer. And one of the things was, was listening. And another one was showing empathy. That's how you shine your joy to other people. And listening is such a huge, that's what I found to be one of the, the biggest ones that I wanted to list is because I, I think we all struggle with that too. Sometimes we don't want to listen. Sometimes we are distracted by other things or, or we want to jump in and we're so quick yeah. to jump in and say something. Yes. Sometimes just, just listen to what someone says. You never know how it could end up changing your life for the better just by, by being still and listening to what they have to say. So completely agree. So true. It's very really powerful. It's, yes. Uh, it's amazing. Um, I really love this. So instead of resolutions for the last few years, you've been like, here are my words. And, and you had more words like, like, um, sub like subcategories that were happening right. which was amazing so um i think last year was tenacity and so this yeah. year it was helping and healing yes. and i so agree like we both are aligned in this that we, this world could use so much more healing um <laughs> so much more healing we yeah. we all need healing too like we have to yes. heal, we have a lot of healing we have to do and then we can also heal others through our healing through them seeing how we've healed um, and so it's just very powerful. And you had another post that was talking about, you have two hands, one to help yourself and one to help others. And I was like, wow, that's exactly the concept with shine your joy for me too, is once you kind of find that joy for yourself, it's even more prevalent in other people. So I have to ask the tough question, sure. how do we heal this world? Where do we even like, where do we start? Like, I mean, I know we talked about listening a little bit, like, but like, where do you, like, what do you envision? Like, as far as what do we all have to do more of? 
I think we have to get uncomfortable. I think that's the problem. I think we don't want to have uncomfortable conversations. I think we don't want to listen. I think we want to, um, I think people have ha had their feet so dug in. They, people have been in survival mode. So they are so invested and dug in mm. to their belief that they don't even want to open up. And, you know, I could use a lot of different um, like ways that I kind of see it. Um, like in the political spectrum, um, there's just a lot of name calling. Yeah. Um, with COVID, there's a lot of name calling. We're putting people into categories. And I've never been comfortable with boxes or categories because I believe everybody's more than just a title, right? Yeah. So absolutely. maybe I'm a mom, but I'm also a woman, a wife, a sister, uh, you know what I mean? But I'm also yeah. a human. Like inside me, this is just my exterior, but inside me, I'm a lot of things. Um, I'm fun. I'm loud. I'm crazy. I'm like, um, I'm, I'm inquisitive. I'm curious. You know what I mean? Like I'm a lot of other things. So we have been in this whole issue and it, this is really what brought me to comedy in the beginning. I was like, maybe if I can joke about certain things, I can open up that uncomfortable conversation. If I can make people kind of chuckle and go home and be like, Oh shit, maybe I am like that. <laughs> you know, that's what I originally, that's what I, I like. That's why I try to use humor because you know, once you try to start a debate, People are just, they just get so angry and then they, they just shut down conversation. We can't heal and we can't help each other if we're just unopen to listen to each other and open our mind. We have to be willing to say, hey, you know, something's going on and I have a different feeling or I felt this way last year and now I feel this way and I want to get a little deeper why I feel this way. Yeah. And we have to be more open to allow people to be comfortable to open up and ask questions. Yeah. We can't just shut people down. And, and that's what I really think. Um, I know that for me, I see so many people hurting. Um, I see so many people that, you know, everyone's gone through the past few years, however they felt comfortable. Right. I try not to judge. I have opinions and I have strong feelings on things, but I try to say, I don't want to say this person doesn't deserve this because of this. Yeah. Well, absolutely. then that's not being a compassionate person. For me, I have, as a bartender, I have so many friends and customers that are, that have been dear friends of mine or regulars of mine for 10 years. Now I know when I go on their social media, they don't feel the same as me and I don't feel the same as them on maybe this topic or that topic. But when they come in, I still give them a big hug and we love each other because yeah. I already know them as a person. Yeah. We have to get to know each other as people, right? Not topics or categories above their head. And that's where we're, that's why we're not healing yeah. because we're divided and, 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 you know, it's such bullshit because we say that we want, well, I'm doing what's best for people. Well, we're not doing what's best for people. I've watched a million videos over the past week of, kids and teenagers crying saying that our life is destroyed and all this other stuff and um and you know it just breaks my heart because we don't want to even have that conversation because they think that you're being mean talking about that you, you know what i mean and I'm like yeah so if we're going to say that people can't say certain things we're not ever going to get to the bottom of it yeah we're not going to be able to solve it because we don't even want to even look at the all the issues there's a multitude of issues on any topic yeah so just this is the one problem. That's not the only problem. There's levels of the problem yeah. and there's ripples of every problem. So the ripple effect of the past two years, it, we're just now coming out with all the statistics of the mental problems that are now here, the anxiety, the depression, the yeah. drug addiction, the alcohol addiction, the sexual um, trafficking of people. Like so many ripples have come out of the past two years. Yeah. So we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot and of work to do. And we have to be able to talk a, about it. We have to, and we have to be able to talk about it. So if you're not going to even let a person talk to open up the dialogue, to let people talk their feelings through and be open to listen to why another person feels a certain way, we're just going to keep spinning and we're just going to keep burning ourselves out because people are, we're broken as a lot of people in, in, in therapy anyhow, because we're all little kids that are carrying things from our childhood. Yeah, we haven't absolutely. solved our own trauma. And now we're trying to take on the trauma of the world. Yeah, you, you can't, you can't take on every topic and be sane. you're just not. And people yeah. are breaking because they've been taking on all this, all this trauma for the past five years. And they're not, they, they can't mentally have the capacity to like process that. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and they're not allowed to feel it. They're not allowed to express it or else they might get silenced if they want Correct. to express how they're feeling, which is a human thing, which actually will connect us and might lead us to a solution because we're in the situation we're at without getting too crazy because we're not solving the problem. We're not actually solving the issues. We're not actually coming up with a solution. We're just, we're like going through that turnstile where you keep going through and going through and spinning and spinning and we're not coming out with a solution. We're, we're, we're just as isolated as we were a few years ago. Yeah, and, and I think we're more isolated too because we've, we've, we've isolated people by multiple things now. So now um, during politics, we isolated people whether they were left or right or this or that, right? Yeah. And then we've isolated people like by this. And it's so funny because we fought so hard to bring, I, I've always never been a boxer category person. I've always been the person in school that talks to everybody. Yeah, I didn't care too. if they were the cool kids. I don't care if they were the cheerleaders. I don't care if they were this or they were the jocks or whatever. I just kind of sprinkled around and talked to everybody. Because yeah. you know what? I yeah. find it interesting. Um, I like people that, like, once somebody said on my Instagram the other day, like, oh, Kristen, I don't think we feel the same on this topic, but I, I still like you and I appreciate your thoughts. And I said, this might come as a surprise. I don't think a lot like a lot of people, but I still love all those people because, you know, they are the ones that make me think differently. So some of the people that I have the most on, not in common with are the people that I find the biggest growth. Or sometimes I like to listen to a variety of information and then I like to just go home by myself and digest it. And that's yeah. where I find my answers because I'm Kristen. I'm not a woman. <laughs> I'm Kristen. I'm not um, a, a political af um, affiliate. I'm Kristen. You know, I'm not like what you want yeah, me to don't be. Box, I, don't box you in, you know, don't box right, you in. I go by what I feel like, oh, I connect to this or you know what? Something doesn't feel, when something doesn't feel right in my gut, I go deep dive because if it feels like something just doesn't sit right with me, but that's because I've done the work when I was younger. I know yeah. what doesn't feel right to me. Something doesn't feel right to me. I go research. I want you to also understand. look into it. You're very diligent. I look into it. Yeah. And then I, and I, and I listen, <clears throat> Hey, it's not easy to listen to hours and hours and hours of two different people's point of views. But you know what? I do it for a reason because that's how I was brought up. I was brought up on debates. I was brought up on discussions. Like my family, we all don't feel the same way, but we're very open and we just, we, we, <laughs> we blur it all. We have these like big debates at my house. And it's great because the kids are all hurt, hearing variety of, and there's all love. We all love and hug each other at the end of the night. And we yeah. all go, all right, this is getting too much. Like, let's move on to something. We'll move on a different topic. But the kids yeah. see discourse. They see discussion, right? And they've all handled the past couple of years pretty good because they're hearing different thoughts, different opinions, different, and it makes them open up to different thoughts. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're hearing people talk about it, actually want to talk about it. And that's the problem is we're not sitting together with a group of us from all different walks and just talking. And when I see these events of people coming together, regardless of what you think, if you think it's a one-sided event or, or not, there was an event recently in DC that had people of all walks of life. And it was one of the proudest things I've seen in years because it was not a one-sided event. It was everybody coming together as, as humans that wanted one thing, which was freedom. Yeah. And that, and that and was I, a beautiful thing to see. That was, that, well, was, I think that was beautiful. People, and that's just what I'm saying, Steph. I just think that like a lot of people are misinterpreting, you know, they, they dug their heels in and they're not understanding. And I think, you know, if you keep dividing and you keep making people not be able to speak or have thoughts and feelings, eventually people are going to come back together. Like everything swings. I'm, I'm 50. I've been around. I've watched a lot of stuff. So I try to like say to the young people, the way I try to keep young people motivated is I'm like, listen, the world is, yes, the world's crazy. Yes, there's a lot of ugly stuff, but ugly and beautiful have to go hand in hand. Rainy days and sunshine have to come. Like, it all has to go together. And, Absolutely. you know, you can focus your energy on just all the negativity. And then you're going to be the one that's going to be anxiety ridden. And believe me, I get sucked in sometimes. I'm like, oh my God, this is, I can't. Sometimes I hear certain things. I'm like, is this real? This is crazy. <laughs> and then life. I have to say, I, I have to say to myself, like, Kristen, don't go into that because it's going to take your joy, it, acknowledge it, understand it, research it, put it on a shelf. And I put yeah. things on shelves because I'm like, all right, when I have to talk about that topic, I'll bring it up. And, and I think I'm going to try to help to facilitate interesting <laughs> conversations or open up dialogues. And if you don't want to hear dialogue, then you probably won't follow me and that's okay. Yeah. But you have to be willing to push yourself to grow. And I think what's going to, I think what I think is kind of happening, you, they've isolated people so much. I think that eventually people are going to want to be like, I think people got to, I think people are starting to come together mm. because I think what happens is, you know, people like, 
when they talk to one person that they really like and they can't talk to their best friend anymore. I'm sorry, but politics should never come between family and friends. You know, one of the things when I grew up at the bar, people would have difference of opinions, different thoughts all the time. They say, oh, you're a fucking asshole, but get this guy a beer. And they would cheers each other and they would buy each other a goddamn beer. Because you know what? You're you and you're you. You don't have to be the same. You can yeah. still sit and have a beer together. And, and I think if we keep telling people that we can't talk to each other, we're not going to have anybody to talk to. Like, yeah. who are you going to talk to? And then Yourself? We'll, and we'll feel more isolated, which is what we're trying to get out of. We're trying to get out of those feelings of isolation. So let's break them all. Let's, let's, come on. Like, we got to, we got to, we got to band together on this. We got to, like, and, we got to agree on something. We got to agree that the world needs healing and we can help and we can do Wait, we have to agree that we're all humans and we have to stop worrying about these XYZs and yeah. find the commonalities. Like the way I described like my, my podcast, I said, you know what? I'm going to use life as a Venn diagram and I'm going to say, okay, maybe we're different here. We're different here, but right in this middle circle, these are the things that we have in common. We have yeah. to build on commonalities first Absolutely. and then we can, and then we can start to heal from there. Like focus on what we're common about. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what I, that's what I see. And, you know, and and that's why at the bar, I'm just like, hey, listen, I don't care. I still love you. You love me. I love you. Hugs, hugs, whatever. And a lot of people go, you know, Kristen, I I agree that, you know, I don't think like you on this, but I understand where you're coming from on that topic. It's how you present information. And I believe name calling or or categories is dividing, you you know, name calling on either side of any topic, any, any, whether it be politics, whether it be vax, not vax, all these different categories we're putting people into right now. It's not helpful. No, it's not right. helpful. It's hurtful. It's not healing. It's, 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 I don't know. It's, 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 and I, and I'm like, you know, don't call that because you know what? You just never know when someone's going to call your name. Like yeah. for me, um, you know, I see I'll, like back when the opioid addiction was so bad and, and we were giving Narcan and all this other stuff and people be like, oh my God, they don't just, I'm like, listen, I'm not going to say that because I know people that, that are some of the nicest people I know that came through addiction. And I don't want to say screw addicts because yeah. I don't want to say screw my friend. See what I'm saying? So yeah. people have to stop take, looking at it as the category and start looking at it as a person and say, yeah. Ooh, I don't want to say that because that's making me like the person I don't like by saying that they're a category. So that's yeah. kind of how I try it. We I'm all have our to- own addictions and struggles too. Like who are we to say, well, you're, you're an opi- opiate addiction and I would never be addicted to opiate. Correct. We all have our other addictions. Or we're, right. I'm, my addiction is probably anxiety. I get hung up in anxiety and that, that, that strips me away from joy. And so we all have mm-hmm. things that, that we struggle with. So who are we to say that like, you know, you can't, accept someone else because they're going through. like that's the the most closed-minded thing anyone could ever think it really is yeah, like love feel, where's the love where, where's the love and i think that we need we need we need discussions and i think that's the problem nobody wants to listen they want to get their blip and they just want to stick with it and that's all they want and i'm like but you have to be willing to go a little bit harder and you have to be willing to go a little bit deeper and and that's what you know like and i'm i'm just a deeper person i want to understand Me everything too. Me too. And, and I, and I think that some people don't, and that's, that's okay. They're busy. And, um, but then you, you, if you're too busy that you don't want to listen, like, you know, there's topics that come up all the time. Like as a woman, like people will think I'm supposed to think one thing because I'm a woman, I'm supposed to be on this side on this topic. Right. But I might say, well, wait, why am I, why do I have to be on that side on that topic? Just cause I'm a woman, but I don't yeah. know. I don't know the whole story. Yeah. So I'll sit down and I'll be like, okay, let me get down into it. And I'll sit there. And I will literally spend a couple hours and I will go and research both sides of the debate and then I'll digest it and I'll say, Hmm, where do I, where do I sit with this? And then what, what is my decision? That's how I make my decisions. And it might yeah. not be other people might not want to do all that. They might want to be like, Oh, I don't know. Just tell me what I'm supposed to think because you know, or, or, or they'll just take the one bullet. Yeah. I feel that, you know, and that's, and that's, yeah. I think, I think social media we all makes have it that choice. Easy. We all have that choice, but why should somebody tell you that you have to think a certain way? Why right. is that ever a right thing to do? Correct. To <laughs> and, and that's what I just think. I think that, I think that some people, I think that a lot of it is goes into like psychological, um, you know, uh, we want to be connected. We want to fit in. We want to be accepted. Yeah. We don't want to stand out. We don't want to be different. We don't, you know what I mean? We don't want to be the first one to say something. So a lot of it really is just human human nature, human nature wants to fit in. 
you know, they want, they want to be accepted by their peers. Right. Nobody wants to be the one at the table by themselves. So you understand where it's coming from, but I'm just trying to make people say, screw that. I don't want to, I don't want to just be accepted. I want to be more comfortable with what I'm deciding. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. And that makes you money- more you. That's again, elevating who you really are. In the end of the day, you're like, I'm being more me because I'm deciding this for myself. I'm not being yeah. influenced by what I think someone is going to like me better because I do this. And as adults, we sometimes lose people on the way because we're being more of who we are and we can't worry about and get hung up on what other people are thinking. And that's something I've struggled with too. Believe me, it's one of, the, one of the hardest things because you think back to your teenage years when you were left out because a lot of us, were the clicks happen a lot when we're younger. And so that's still a trauma I deal with. So you don't want to be left, you don't want to be left out, but at the same time, I'm really starting to own who I am and I'm moving forward in my truth. And if, if people don't want to follow you in your truth, that's their decision and that's okay. And you know, you wish the best for them and then you, you move on and do what, what's needed most for you. And so that you can spread the love and joy to those who want to hear it. So, um, <laughs> perfectly said, no, perfectly said. I mean, I think that, you know, sometimes we find our truth in different experiences or, you know, different things happen and it kind of like, you know, I feel like, you know, when you, I, sometimes I look back, I'm like, okay, I'm 50 now. What would I, if I were 20, if I was 24 year old Kristen, where, where would I, what would I be thinking about different things or where would I be at? You know what I mean? And that's, it's kind of an interesting thing to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I really feel like there were certain things, you know, sometimes I miss the nineties because yeah, some shit sucked, but I felt like people were at least were more connected because I feel like music was funner and people were kind of like, they could connect Right. On, on the music and kind of bring people from all walks of life together yeah. so there's more unity and sometimes when I go to concerts now you know bands from back then and you look around you see all the diversity in the room and everyone just singing together you're just like ah oh, see this is so I beautiful know. I know don't tell me people don't like each other stop saying that nobody likes each other people That's- do like other and we have to stop playing that story out because it's making people you know um you know it's just it's just it's just sending a, a different message. And I just, it's just funny to me because I love, that's what I liked about comedy. I, I, what I, what I loved about comedy when I was younger and I wanted to get into it is because comedy was like people that spoke their truth on stage and yeah. they shocked the shit out of you and they made you focus or face the shit that was bad and be like, Oh my God, that is so true. Or I'm going to look into that. Or well, they spoke the truth. And now comedy is being like, you that's know, it. You can't. And, and so then I'm like, so I don't really have a desire to really do comedy right now because God forbid I say that one joke, you know, that <laughs> someone doesn't like and they cancel me. Well, I still have work to do. You know, yeah. I'm still want to, you know, so I, it's not as fun for me right now because I feel like people are all just, and you can kind of tell sometimes when people watch certain people, cause then they're trying to like, you know, be more like that person. And, and so I'm like, I'm going to think about if I want to jump back in that, I might take a little bit yeah. of a break from that until I feel more inspired because you know, I, comedy was, comedy's made to push buttons. That's what yeah, it's made for. It is. It, it's made to shock you and push the button and open up that conversation. Comedy comes from pain. Po- comedy comes from hurt. Comedy comes from tragedy. You know, Joan Rivers was one of my favorites and there's a documentary about her and somebody starts yelling at her because she made a joke on stage and she goes, oh, uh, shut up. She goes, I talk about real stuff. And, and, um, <laughs> And, and that's how we heal, you know, and, and, it's, and it's true. That's so you know true. what I mean? And, and, and I think that's, what's really important. And people have to realize that. And if we're not going to be willing to have our feelings hurt and we're not going to be willing to let a real conversation happen, then we're just going to be on this cycle and we're not going to heal and we're, yeah. we're not going to be hopeful. And, you know, the more I look around, I, I want to spread hope, happiness, help, and hail. That's what I want for 2022. Yeah, it's needed, it's necessary, and that's what you want. If you want to be positive and you want to be, maybe you might not agree with everything I say, then come join me and hang out <laughs> and listen to my inspiration. If you don't really want someone to tell you the truth and, and ruffle your feathers a little bit, then you're probably not gonna <laughs> you're probably not gonna like my content for the rest of 2022. But <laughs> somebody has to say. Somebody has to step up and say, listen, this is insanity. We're, we're hurting each other. We're not helping each other. We're not helping each other. We are hurting each other. And, yeah. and, um, and that's where we're at. We, we, we need healing. We need, we need to be hopeful. We need to be happy. Yes, life sucks sometimes. Yes, hard things happen. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on in the world. But you know what? You, you, have, to, you have to master yourself mm. 
Absolutely. and master your inner circle first. Handle yourself, handle your children, handle your family and your business. And then, you know, I'm not saying ignore the world, but you gotta you gotta make sure your own house is in, in, yeah, in effect. Deal with what needs to be dealt with. Are your kids okay? Yeah. You know, that's your top priority. Is your kid okay through all of this? Have you asked them, how are you handling this? Yeah. How does this make you feel? Right. What can I do to support you? Like, that's what I said to my son when I got home from dinner last night with my girlfriends. After us all talking about how this has all been for our kids, yeah. I came home and I said, I just want to say to you, you're amazing and you're so powerful. And is there anything else I can do? For you? you know what I mean? I just wanted to let him wow. know that I love and support him. That's because so important. We don't say that it's hard to check anybody. in. You forget to check in on your kids sometimes. Right. And they're going through some shit too. You think this is hard for you? It's hard for them. They're still Much trying to figure out who they them. are. Yeah, they're, so, they're still in a development uh, experience, developing who they are. They're not correct. even as far along as we are. And then they're like, oh my God, what the hell's going on? You know? So open yourself up to hear what your family wants to say, your children need to say, and digest it instead of reacting. We're just in a reactionary mode and reaction doesn't help. We need to be proactive. We need to have more of a game plan. We need to stop reacting to every single thing that people say. We need to stop and digest and eat it a little bit. And I'll say one other thing. One of the things I say about social media <laughs> is that people just want to share their, they just want to spew information or failings or, or respond to everybody. And I used to say, remember being in high school and you had to write a five paragraph essay <laughs> and you had to write your opening statement and you had to write your three statements to support your opening yep, statement. I remember those and days. then you had to see where you found the information. If you don't have time to do a five paragraph essay when you're on social media to one person's comment, then that means you should just probably keep scrolling because you're just wasting your own time and energy and you're just making yourself fired up and wasting more time than you could have spoke, you know, focus on your own healing, Absolutely. you know, so you're not going to change a person's opinion. If they have a strong feeling that people don't like what I say or people don't agree with me, um, I say, thank you so much for your opinion. I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. And I move on yeah. because you know what? If they want to have a real dialogue, I'm open to have a dialogue with anybody. If you want to tell me where you got that information or you want to get to a real conversation and try to you know, understand where I'm coming from, I'll have a conversation with anybody. But if you think that I'm going to fight with you and, 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 and just spew anger, I'm not going to because that just burns my, my joy. Yeah, absolutely. We, we have to protect our joy as well. So we have to choose how much of the negativity we're willing to ingest. And I have to be mindful of that too throughout my day. Okay, do I want to listen to the news right now? No, I don't. Let's listen to music instead. You know, and there are, I do like to be informed. So I do like to listen to, and I don't actually listen to the news. I listen yeah. to different people, uh, experts talking about everything. And I, yeah. and I find a little bit more peace in that. <laughs> Uh, you can't listen to it all day long you're gonna lose yeah your but I still can't even listen to that all day long either I gotta be like okay no. I'm done and um I was going to say when we we're talking about comedy I don't know if you've heard of JP Sears but he is yes. so incredible because he just puts it all out there and yeah. it helps us heal it helps us laugh a little bit and he's afraid all the time if he's going to be silenced or canceled yeah I mean, you know what he has almost a million million followers and I'm like you know what that's what I call hope right there that's that's he's he's do he's he's fighting and being himself the best he can and all but you know there's a handful of comedians that I do follow that I think are funny because they just they just say what they want to say and they don't give two shits about being canceled and and they're lucky because they have the fan base that they can really can can really do it because yeah. you like um there's another one i think it, i think his name's ryan some i think ryan lawn he does like a lot of funny skits and like he got canceled in a show in canada and then he rescheduled to another place and he got a bigger he right. got a bigger theater and sold it out you know what i mean and there's yeah. like you know like tim dylan can sometimes be a lot of people find him like a button pusher but i think he's very funny like see that's the thing I have a, I have a good sense of humor. So like, even if I don't agree with the comedy that the person's saying, or I find it a little bit offensive, I can still laugh at it because right. I understand that what they're there to make you think. Yeah. So I think a lot of people have to stop getting offended and be like, Hmm, how do I think about that? Why do they think that? Who yeah. did they get that? Did they really find that information someplace? You know, I, I like it, but I'm just an inquisitive person. I'm just a very curious yeah. person. And I always want to do the deep dive and find, understand things. So um, I like that there those people like Andrew Schultz is another one. You know what I mean? Like they all have done huge, they all have huge social media followings. They all like really put it all out there. And I think it's great. They're young. 
and they're all going for it and they haven't got canceled. So, you know, it is great. And I think that's the thing about life. Yeah. The pendulum goes this way, then it goes this way, then it always sometimes yeah. comes back into the middle. And we're just, we're just in a, in a, in a time that really feels scary and confusing and angry and, and all these different things, but I don't want to be angry and I don't want to be yeah. pissed right. off all the time. So I look at the information. I do a little deep dive over here. I've had to force myself to do a deeper dive on a lot of the COVID stuff when my husband's in the hospital and, and really, and I understood a lot more than me. I think a lot of people do understand and I'll share my journey as I go along and I'll share certain aspects of that, that, that five months. And some people might learn, but I do know that I want to be there to support people. I think people need to know that there's somebody that cares about them yeah. and that they're not alone. Whether you're home working by yourself and you're afraid to go out, you're not alone. There's other people that you can connect to on social media, at least to have you have something that so you feel comfortable to go out. If you have been going out all along and you're angry that you don't want to be the way it is, I hear you. I feel you. You know what I mean? I because I, I connect to people. I connect to the shoe on the other foot. I always say, like, I try to put the shoe on the other foot and look from that person's point of view. So I'm not here to hate on you. I'm just here to see how I can help you. Yeah. And if, and if we just broke through the, you know, the tempting desire to be so reactive and to, you know, be placing the blame or to be putting people in a certain corner, if we just opened up to listen and to and yes. healing in mind, like, just think how much better, and we can make this world better. That's the thing is we all have a choice first. Like, regardless of what's going on, we still have a choice to interpret it the way we want to and to find our light. And we can make light to other people. And I think that we need to do more of that so that we can change this world. We don't have to accept what's happening in this world. We can change it. We can have right. a different thought about it and we can change. I believe that just as soon as the world, like you said, the pendulum, just as soon as it swings one way, but we can all power together and make it better like yeah. like that yeah so, um totally we, we, still, we still have that power within all of us we, it was we all have our own power we all have our own personal power we so do. you know you can it, it's up to you how you use it if yeah. you want to play into the doom and gloom and negativity in the fair game you're welcome to do that fear doesn't work for me never has never will i won't play into it um, even on my darkest days, I'm always going to try to find a hope of something. Yeah. And then when I can come through it, I'm going to try to find a way that I can help, help, you know, like when I say, when I use one hand to help myself and one hand to help another, you yeah. know, I learned a lot and I overcome, you know, that four months or five months was a, a exhausting and, and hard, but I learned a lot. And now if I can use that experience that I had. My job is to now put a hand out behind somebody else and lift somebody else up that might be going through that. You know yeah. what I mean? Or try to try to find a way to support people. So that's what you're supposed to do, you know? Yeah. And if you don't want to, if you, and if you're not strong enough, then just don't be an asshole. Like if you can't help, <laughs> just don't hurt. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you know? absolutely. And that's, and that's where we're at. So, I mean, you know, if you can't be helpful, just don't be hurtful. All right. Yeah. That's all, you know? That's, that's nothing simple. Nice that's you have nothing nice to say. Just don't say anything at all. Just keep moving. I know. It's a life lesson. It's a life lesson. It's it, it, maybe it doesn't seem as easy, but it really is. It really is. Um, especially if you know it can make the world more positive. You know, if that's your goal. Um, so, um, I wanted to leave with one last question because we did cover yes. some of the other stuff. Yeah. Um, just to kind of close it up and really, again, like I mean, this has just been such an inspiring conversation, and I know people will listen, Kristen. I know they will. <laughs> they will come and listen because this is so like who's this crazy lady? That this is just so <laughs> important. It's just so important, and this is this is what I've envisioned us being able to talk about things like this and open it up to the world to talk about too and to heal together. So, what important message or wisdom would you like to send along to our listeners to, to send them off and inspire them for this year because we, we are we're 27 days in we're not too far in what would you like to to leave them with well two things one is that um you know in life right everyone's always trying to worry about being somebody else and i think that your greatest gift is just being yourself so first and foremost you know whether this past two years you know, you went on a self awareness journey and, and try to like look inside yourself and say, what do I want to change about myself? Or what, what am I going to learn from this experience? Or if it put you on a, on a darker path, you know, remind yourself that you being you is the greatest thing, right? Yeah. So understand how powerful you are. You are a powerhouse, whether you realize it or not, you just haven't maybe tapped into your superpower. <laughs> Second thing is, you know, uh, you know, you, you have two choices in life. 
you can be, you know, like I'm a big believer, like the whole fight and flight. You know what I mean? When situations come on you, some people are fighters and some people are fighters, right? So I've always been a fighter. It's just, it's just my mantra. You know what I mean? Like I just, I just go forward and I, and I figure it out. So, um, you know, with all those stuff that you can see on a day-to-day basis, you're really deciding what channel you're watching. So yeah. like my friend, it was funny because my friend was talking about TikTok last night. Depending on what you want to watch, your feed is going to give you what you want, right? That's right. So if you're going through a breakup and, or you're trying to like get on a self-awareness journey, you're going to, and you tell yourself to watch all these videos, like you're amazing. You can do it. You're great. That's what you're going to hear. If you want to hear like the world sucks and everything's plopped up, you're going to hear it. <laughs> so it's up to you to decide what do you want to put into yourself? Because what you put into yourself is what you're going to receive more of. So if you want to keep drinking all that doom and gloom and fear, you're going to be a fearful person, probably full of anxiety and not want to leave your house. But if you want to say, I want to, I want to, I want to heal my soul and I want to feel lighter and I want to do this, then you take that in and that's what you're going to project. And that's what you're going to get more of. So I really believe like what you speak into the universe is what you're going to receive. Yeah. So be mindful. Those thoughts. Be mindful of what you're taking in. Just like when people say, be mindful of what you call yourself. Be mindful of what you're allowing your mind to hear. Yep. Because this is going to be the year that you really have to decide what am, what am I going to do with my life? Like, what am I going to play into? Absolutely. You know what I mean? And if you really want to, if it's okay, you know, not you can't always be loved. Not everyone's always going to love you. That's okay. The people that really do like you, they'll be there. Yeah, they'll absolutely. find you. Your people will find you. So don't that's worry what about it. You have to people. focus on. Focus on the You have to focus on the ones that correct. You have to focus on the people that really connect to you. And that's what you have to focus your energy on. 100%. I, I feel like I need to do like the raise the roof emoji right here. It's just like, <laughs> like, like 100% resonate. And, you know, I just want to thank you for taking the time to speak with me. And I, I, I know we'll connect soon and I, I wish you all the best for this year that it just like takes off like a rocket and just everything comes together, health and happiness. And thanks to our, our, our listeners for, for tuning in. And I hope we can continue with this conversation. I think it's, I think it's amazing to be able well, to. Well, thank, thanks for having me. When I saw my IG lives back up, I'll have you on too, because I'm going to be bringing people on my IG lives that are more like have gone through things or like, you know, how they heal or how they deal. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's what I want to focus my my Instagram um, stories on this year. So that'd be great. That's amazing. I would love to be a part of that. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Sounds good, Steph. (laughs) Thanks, Kristen. All right.